The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Hello, learners. Welcome to this uh, learning program. I am Tasa Gerard, your economics teacher. We're going to be looking at um, lesson 13 of our program. Now, before we enter into our lesson 13, we'll, be, we'll need to revise, we'll need to correct the assignment I gave in the last session. So let's look at the assignment together first. This is I mean, in a closed economy with no government expenditure or taxation, total consumption expenditure is always two thirds of disposable income. All investment expenditure is exogenous and uh, plant investment expenditure is 40,000 million francs. Here. The first question we are expected to determine the equilibrium level of national income. And the second, if the full employment output level is 130,000 million francs saving, which gap will exist? Okay, this is a question. Let's uh, look at the solution. Um, the A part, C, remember, let's just go back. You see the, the, the A part, they say determine the equilibrium level of income. So we're working on the equilibrium level of income. So this is A part C, which is consumption. It has been given as two thirds of disposable income. Why T stands for disposable income? And investment is autonomous, exogenous. It's given out 40,000 million francs. Those are the values that are given. I will know that in this economy, as a two sector economy, equilibrium occurs where, equilibrium occurs where Y equals C plus I. But our YT, to get our YT, we know our white is y minus y minus income as income minus taxes. But in a two-sector economy, there are no taxes, there is no government. So that's why your yt is the same as your y. So at the equilibrium y equals c plus i, as the earlier state uh, stated. So our y now equals to two third y represents c plus forty thousand represents i. If we continue, we take y minus two thirds y equals forty thousand. We bring the like terms together, so that means one third y. We take y y stands for one y minus two third y represents one third y equals forty thousand. So we divide everything by one third, and our equilibrium income is one hundred and twenty thousand million francs. That's the equilibrium, it's 120. Now, but our full employment, let's go to the next question. Our full employment output was given as 130,000 million francs. And we've just seen our equilibrium to be 120. So <clears throat> our equilibrium is 120. So what are we concluding? We discovered that the full employment output is more than the equilibrium output. Now this shows that there's a deflationary gap Based on our last lesson, it shows that there's a deflationary cap, gap because the full employment output is 130,000 million francs, francs as given, while the equilibrium output that we just calculated is only 120,000 francs. That is that for the assignment. Tam, tam,
Now, in this uh, lesson, lesson 13, we'll be looking at the multiplier. Looking at the multiplier. Let's take a lesson plan. We'll start with the lesson objectives. We'll look at the previous knowledge, problem situation. We'll take lesson activity, application exercises, and then we'll get the assignment. So, lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, students should be able to illustrate the multiplier in the various economies. Let's illustrate the multiplier in the various economies. And uh, explain the balanced budget multiplier. Explain the balanced budget multiplier. Previous knowledge. <clears throat> the students can explain inflationary and uh, deflationary gaps using diagrams. Take a real life situation. Your uncle is complaining that the fall in public investments in your locality has led to a fall in the living standards of workers. That is a complaint your uncle is giving. Question, how can the local authority increase the workers' living standards without increasing their wages? By the end of this lesson, we'll be able to get uh, we'll be able to get enough resources to permit us to handle this question. The multiplier is denoted by k. It is defined as <clears throat> it shows a ratio by which income changes as a result of changes in expenditure. It's a ratio by which income changes as a result of changes in expenditure. It is given by this formula. <clears throat> change in Y divided by change in expenditure or 1 all over marginal rate of leakages. Let me just define the variables where change in Y, that's uh, delta Y, change in income. This, this one is change in income. Y stands for income. This one stands for change in expenditure. And finally, the marginal propensity to withdraw. So let's just look at it again. It shows a, shows by how much income changes as a result of changes in expenditure. We can equally look at the multiplier as uh, it shows how <clears throat> a slight change in expenditure leads to a more than proportionate change in the income. That is uh, the multiplier. Let's look at how look at the operation of the multiplier. But before we look at it, we need to get some basic basic assumptions. We're going to assume that. The MPC, that is the marginal propensity to consume, and the marginal propensity to save are constant. We equally assume that there is less than full employment of resources. We assume that all injections are autonomous. They are not related to income. They are, they are not related to income. They are autonomous. We assume equally that households adjust instantly their consumption to the level of income, such that Consumption is a function of income. Now let's try to explain how it operates. This is an example we are taking. If a firm decides to construct a new building, that is an investment, costing 100 million francs, then the income of builders and the suppliers of raw materials would be 100 million francs. That money now becomes income to another group of persons. If we assume that the MPC, that's the marginal propensity to consume in this economy, is 0.8, then the builders and the suppliers of raw materials would spend 80 million. That is, we take 0.8 times 100, it gives you 80 million. And they'll save the rest, they'll save 20 million. If out of 80 million, consume 20 will be saved. That means that this, assuming that the MPC is uh, 0 0.2. This spending, that is spending of 80 million, this spending creates extra income for another group of people. Probably the builders, the builders, the supplier of raw materials who took the 80 million, they might have spent the money to pay school fees or to go for shopping, buy dresses and so forth. So another group of people now will take the money, that's the 80 million. And this next group of people 
will spend 0.8 of the 80 million. That means if you do the calculation, 0.8 times 80 will give you 64 million. They are going to spend 64 million and they'll save the rest 60 million. 16 plus 64 gives you 80, 80 million. So if they are spending 64, they'll save 60 million. This process will continue with each round of spending being 0.8 for each previous round. The process will only come to a halt or to an end when the initial 100 million injected as investment equals uh, savings, which is a, a leakage. So when all the 100 will become savings, that is where the economies are declaring where S equals I it will come to an end. So the final increase in income can be obtained using the following formula. So this is the formula that we can use to obtain the final change in income as a result of the investment of 100 million francs. So this is the formula, change in Y. Change in Y equals A all over one minus R. Now our A represents, or change in Y, of course, for reason change in Y is change in income. A represents <clears throat> the first term of the initial expenditure. That's our A here, is the first term of initial expenditure. While our R represents a common ratio or MPC. That's the formula we use to determine how or the actual change in money as a result of the investment of 100 million. So our change in Y here, we've seen the initial investment, the first term or the initial investment of 100 million divided by 1 minus R. R is 0.8 because that was the MPC that was, fi was fixed. So if we go to the next stage, we see that 1 minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.2. So we have 100 uh, divided by 0 0.2. So that will give us a change in Y of 500 million francs. So what does this imply? This is the conclusion. Thus, the 100 million francs extra investment has created a 500 million francs increase in income. So because of a small increase in investment of 100 million francs, it has created an increase in income of 500 million francs. So we need to now calculate the multiplier. Of course, we had to. So therefore, the value of the multiplier equals, remember our multiplier was change in Y all over change in expenditure. And the expenditure in this case is a investment. <clears throat> so we have our K multiplier equals to change in Y is 500. Expenditure was increased by 100. So K is 5. That's 500 divided by 100 gives you 5. That is the value of our multiplier. Now let's look at the other method. 1 all over the marginal frequency to, to withdraw. That's the other method. And the marginal frequency to withdraw here, we are talking about, <coughs> we have 1 all over 1 minus MPC. We have MPC, which is uh, 1 minus MPC is the same as MPS. K equals 1 all over 1 minus 0 0.8. If you do the calculations, this one is 1 divided by 0 0.2, which will end up equally giving you, giving you 5 as the multiplier. That is how we get our multiplier. Now, we're going to look at uh, <clears throat> the multiplier in the various economies. We'll start with the multiplier in the two-sector economy. In the two-sector economy, our multiplier K is given as 1 all over MPS or 1 all over 1 minus MPC. That's what we have in the two-sector economy, where MPS is a marginal propensity to save, and uh, MPC, at times denoted by B, is a marginal propensity to consume. We're going to get an example. Given that consumption in an economy stands at 80% of disposable income, and investment is 220 million francs. You are expected to determine the value of the multiplier. So we're only interested in determining the value of the multiplier. Now let's get the solution. We have our formula first. Multiply is 1 all over 1 minus B. And in this case, <clears throat> our B is 80% of 
disposable income, 8% that's 0 0.8. Let's go to the next. Our B or MPC is 80%, which equals 0 0.8. That's our B. And then that means our K is 1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.8. What does it mean? It means that it is 1 divided by 0 0.2. That will end up giving us 5. 1 divided by 0 0.2 give us 5. We do the calculations. Now let's take a three sector economy. That's the two sector economy. We look at the multiply in the three sector economy. Now in the three sector economy, the formula is a bit different. The multiply K is, we have one divided by MPS plus MPT. That's one way of looking at it. Or we take it this way. It is one divided by one minus B plus BT. 1 minus B. B here stands for, let me just define the values again, where B, where MPS is a marginal propensity to save. MPT, small t, there is a marginal propensity to tax. MPC, marginal propensity to consume. Just to remind us that our MPS is gotten by get, getting a change in saving or a change in income. While MPT is a change in tax, all of our change in income, and MPC is a change in a consumption all over a change in income. So we're going to get an example for this uh, three-sector economy. Given that consumption in an economy <clears throat> stands at 80% of disposable income, investment is 520 million francs, government spending is 80 million francs, and direct tax 0.51 determine the value of the multiplier. Okay, the multiplier itself, we first uh, bring our formula, is 1 all over 1 minus B plus BT. Our B in this case, our B is the MPC, which is given 0.8, and our T is 0.5. So substituting that formula, it gives us 1 all over 1 minus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 times 0.5. We finally get our multiplier here is 1.667. That's the value of the multiplier <coughs> in this economy. Let's take the next economy, four sector economy. Multiply in the four sector economy. In the four, this is a formula. The multiply K <coughs> in the four sector is where one, take one divided by MPS, that's marginal propensity to save, which I said is changed in S and change in Y plus MPT as a marginal propensity to tax, the change in tax and change in Y will give you that, plus MPM as a marginal propensity to import, the change in import and change in uh, uh, income. Now, we can take another way, we can equally look at it this way, K equals one all over one minus B plus BT plus M, where, of course, our B is our MPC, our T is our MPT and our M is our MPM. So that is it where MPC is B, marginal price to consume, MPS, marginal price to save, MPT, marginal price to tax, and MPM, marginal price to import. So let's look at an example. We are given the following values. C is 80% of disposable income. I is uh, 520. G800, direct tax 0.51, export 600, and import 0.21. Determine the value of the multiplier. So those values uh, indicate that we are operating the fourth sector economy. You see export coming in and import. Now the multiplier, we just, uh, the first thing we put our formula, which is 1 all over 1 minus B plus BT plus M. So our B in this case, if we look, our B in this case, 8% is 0.8. Then our T, our T is 0 0.5, and our M is given as 0 0.2. So that, those are the values. B is 0 0.8, T is 0 0.5, and M is 0 0.2. So we'll fit all this in the formula, and that's what we're going to get. 1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2. That gives us multiplier of... 1.25. That's the value of a multiplier. 1.25. Okay. 
We'll, we'll, we'll look at something else. We'll look at the determinants of the size of the multiplier. <clears throat> and uh, we need to just to stress that <clears throat> the size of the multiplier depends mainly on the income that leaks out of the system. So it depends on the rate of leakages. The more leakages, the less the multiplier. The smaller the leakage, the more the multiplier. So we'll start with uh, the pro pro proportion to tax or propensity to tax. That is a marginal propensity to tax. The higher the tax rate, the smaller the size of the multiplier because taxes represent a withdrawal. When the taxes, taxes tend to reduce the amount of money, <clears throat> the circular flow, and then uh, that will lead to a fall in the multiplier process. The reverse will obtain. We'll look at um, the propensity to import, that's NPM. A high rate of import reduces the size of the multiplier. Since it causes a leakage and a fall in the NPC for local product, it causes a leakage, that's a leakage, um, imports, imports are leakages, it represents a leakage. So that will cause the multiplier to, to fall. And lastly, a propensity to save, NPS. Higher savings will lead to less spending. You save more, everything being equal, you're going to spend less. Thus, the size of the multiplier will be smaller. Those are the main determinants of the size of the multiplier. We're going to look at the downward multiplier. It explains how small reductions in spending can bring about relatively larger reductions in income. Now, the multiplier that we had, we, we initially were explaining how a small increase in investment or expenditure as a whole causes a more than proportional increase in, uh, in income. And we saw, the example we, 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 we saw was that investment increased by 100 and that led to an increase in income of 500 million francs. That means if we were to look at the reverse, say investment falls by 100 million, for instance, and we look at the change in income, we are going to end up equally discovering that income will fall as will fall by 500 million. So a small fall in investment is going to lead to a more than proportional fall in, in income. That's a downward multiplier. So a cut in spending will reduce income, <clears throat> which will in turn lead to a further reduction in spending and income in a cumulative manner. We're going to take another concept, uh, the last main concept, based on our obje uh, objective, the balance budget multiplier. We'll look at the balance budget multiplier. Now, we'll talk about balance budgets. You know, the balance budget simply explains how uh, what government plans to spend uh, is the same as what she plans to receive from taxes. Now, the balance budget multiplier explains, or it refers to, a change in the equilibrium national income caused by an equal change in government spending and government tax revenue. That's equilibrium national income changes because of an equal change in government spending and government tax revenue. We're going to get some a little bit more practical. It occurs for the simple reason that the expansionary effects of government spending is greater than the contractionary effect of increased taxation. The balanced budget multiplier is a summation, we'll do the illustration here, a summation of the positive government spending multiplier and the negative tax multiplier. And in this case, it is equal to, balanced budget multiplier is equal to one. Now, we will expect that when the government spends, or the government uh, spends exactly the same amount she gets from taxes. It is not going to, it's going to have a neutral effect in the economy. That's what most, uh, most of us will expect. But that is not true. It is going to cause the equilibrium income to increase by the same increase in government expenditure. And the simple reason is that they will look at a different multiplier, a multiplier for the government. We have a multiplier for the government, a positive multiplier for the government, and the negative multiplier for the taxes. So this is a uh, it is given as um, one. This one divided by one 
minus b represents the multiplier of the government. If you add to the multiplier, tax multiplier with minus b all over 1 minus b, it is going to give you 1 in this case. If we were to assume that the MPC in this case is something like 0.8, for instance, you take 1 divided by 1 minus uh, 0.8 is going to give you here 5. You take minus 0.8 all over 1 minus 0.8, it will give you minus 4. 5 minus 4 gives you 1. That would be a balanced budget multiplier. Now, <clears throat> just explaining what we have here, where this is a multiplier for government expenditure, 1 divided by 1 minus b, and uh, minus b over 1 minus b, a multiplier for taxes. So b now represents the MPC. So we're going to get some uh, an example to further explain the multiplier. Let us assume that <clears throat> Government expenditure increases by 50 million francs. And that at the same time, taxes also increase by 50 million. With a marginal propensity to consume given by 0.8. That's what we're given. Government expenditure increases by 50 million. Taxes equally increase by 50 million. MPC is constant. It is given as 0.8. It follows that the multiplier for government expenditure in this case is 5. Now, if you look, multiply, how do we get the 5? To get this 5, we take 1 all over 1 minus, because this, this uh, point A here stands for the MPC, which was given, this is it given here. So, 1 divided by 1 minus 0.8 will give you 5. While that for taxes is minus 4, that is, you take uh, point, minus 0 0.8 divided by 1 minus 0 0.8, it gives you minus 4. That will be the different multiplier for government and taxes. Now, <clears throat> a change, what we have observed is that a change in government expenditure of 50 million francs thus leads to an increase in income of 250 million francs. Now, why an increase in income of 250 million francs? Well, I assume government expenditure increased by 50,000. So if the multiplier for government is 5, if you take 5 times 50, it means incomes in that economy are assumed to increase by 250, that's 250 million francs. Now let's look at the effect of uh, taxes. On the other hand, a change in taxes of 50 million, equally taxes were increased by 50 million, leads to a total change in the income of minus 200 million. How did we get that? You take the tax multiplier, which you got as minus 4 times 50 million. So it gives you minus 200 million. So if you take the two and add, you discover that income will increase by 50. So the overall effect of these two changes is that income increases by 50 million. That is 250 million plus minus 200 million, negative 200 million. That gives you 50 million. That means, what's the summary? It means that government expenditure increased by 50 million, financed by taxes of 50 million, and national income has increased by 50 million. That explains the balanced budget multiplier. And the simple explanation is based on the different multiplier of the government and tax as, as we have just illustrated. Income has increased by an amount equal to the increase in government spending. Income has increased by an amount equal to the increase in government spending. So what does it mean? It means that change in Y is equal to change in G. And if change in Y equals change in G, it means change in Y divided by change in G is going to give us 1. So, we can equally put it this way, change in Y all over change in G equals 1. That is a multiplier. Okay, we now go to the next. <clears throat> Income has increased by an amount equal to the increase in government spending. That is change in Y equals change in this. We have that. Hence, the balance budget multiplier equals 1. Now, let's get to uh, recall what we've done in this uh, uh, lesson, multiplying the various economies, two sector, we have the formula there, the three sector, 
That is the formula 1 over 1 minus B plus BT. Four sector, 1 over 1 minus B plus BT plus M. They will determine the size of the multiplier determinants, MPS, MPT, and uh, MPM. Now, we equally saw the balance budget multiplier, which is a change in equilibrium national income caused by an equal change in government expenditure and government tax revenue. That is, we had that change in Y equals change in G. So we look at uh, this exercise. It has been calculated by the government statistician that for every additional 1,000 francs worth of national income, 100 francs is saved, 300 francs goes in for taxation, and 250 is spent on imports. Determine the value of the multiplier. Here we just need to calculate the various uh, MPS. MPS here will give us 0.1, MP2 will be 0.3, and MPM will be 0.2 using those formulas which we have earlier given. So our multiplier in this case is 1.538. Exercise 2, if the marginal price to consume in the economy is 0.75 of income, the value of tax multiplier will be, our right answer in this case, we calculate where it's going to be minus 3. That's going to be the right answer, which is B. Then the assignment now, we have an assignment. In a given hypothetical economy, the following values are obtained. Figures in million of francs. These are the values. So this is a question. Sorry, the, the assignment continues. Which type of economy is implied by the above statistics, two marks? Calculate the equilibrium level of income, four marks. What is the value of the multiplier in this economy, four marks? State two factors that influence the value of the multiplier, two marks. So that's the end of this lesson. We'll see again next, the next session, which we're going to be looking at the accelerator. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tam amote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 